So this is a topic that's near and dear to my heart, and I will explain why it's near and dear to my heart, because there's nothing more frustrating than being on shift and taking care of multiple patients, only to have a radiology technician come and ask me, are you sure you want to give contrast? And then I say yes, and they say, well, I need you to sign this piece of paper saying that you're okay with giving them the contrast. And I'm sure many of you have had to deal with that. And it's very frustrating, um, especially with uh, some of the evidence that we currently have. So I think it, let's start with where we were, um, the evidence we had, and then let's kind of talk about where we are and then things that we can do. So the old news. So there's actually no randomized clinical trials uh, historically on this topic. They're all observational trials. Now, the problem with observational trials is there's actually a few things that I'm going to go over. So first, there is selection bias. So if you believe that contrast is going to cause kidney injury, then you're going to just uh, exclude those patients from basically getting contrast. And so then you're left with this select population that you're testing this in and not all comers. The second issue is that there's a confounding bias with older studies, and that is that maybe there's something else other than the contrast that's causing the problems, like maybe the vancomycin that we gave, or the toradol, or the leaders and leaders of unbalanced crystalloid, or maybe it's just the disease process itself. They're so sick that they're not perfusing the organ. And so it's really hard to say that older trials really give us a true view of what we currently practice. The second issue I have with older evidence is that, are we talking about somebody's creatinine getting bumped up or are we talking about somebody ending up on dialysis or dying? Because when you look at the older studies, a lot of them, that's what they were looking at is, is there a bump in the creatinine and that's it, which is not a clinically oriented outcome. And so I think it's time to kind of talk about why is contrast actually not the devil, but yet we call it the devil? So the first thing is, is that I've already talked about confounding bias, and it's an easy culprit to blame the contrast. We give the contrast, and that's what causes the kidney to get injured because of from a timeline standpoint, it's the thing that we remember giving or doing different. But the reality is, is that a lot of these people, especially our septic patients, um, it may be that they have something else going on. Maybe they're dehydrated. They've been throwing up. Maybe it's the medications we've been giving. Maybe their diabetes and their hypertension aren't well managed. And so there's other things at play and it's probably multifactorial. It's not probably just the contrast itself. The second point I want to make is that the type of contrast agents we use today are vastly different than the contrast agents we were using 20 and 30 years ago. So 20, 30 years ago, we we're using these hyperosmolar contrast agents that had serum osmolalities of 900 to 1200. And the current contrast agents that we're using are really closer to like that two to 300. They're more isoosmolar. So that's also going to be softer on the kidneys. The volume in which we give the contrast is also much smaller. And then the final thing I would say is that a lot of the historic data was looking at angiography, arterial contrast. And the nice thing about, or the not nice thing about looking at arterial contrast is it's vastly different than intravenous contrast. And the reason is, is that one, it's a direct hit to the kidneys, number one. But number two, if you remember back to our anatomy days, the wall of the artery is vastly different than the wall of a vein. And it can have plaques. And you know what happens when you injure the wall of an artery? You shower atheroemboli. And so maybe it's the atheroemboli that we're causing the problem with the older studies. We're definitely not seeing that in the intravenous studies that we have today. And that's the newer perspective. Now, there are too many trials to list all of them, but there are about 12 or 13 observational trials now looking at this. Over 200,000 patients in these observational trials. And basically if we could divide them, it's they got contrast or they didn't get contrast. And what they found is there's no association with acute kidney injury, chronic kidney disease, the need for dialysis or mortality. So no difference 
So we have newer evidence with the type of agents that we're using in the form that we use it in, which is intravenous. And we're not seeing those bad outcomes that we had seen from those historic studies that are antiquated. So much so that just in January of 2020, the American College of Radiology and the National Kidney Foundation put out a joint consensus statement. And I'm paraphrasing here, but they said the risk of acute kidney injury from IV contrast has been overstated. So this is radiology and nephrology coming together and saying, we agree that the current evidence shows that this has been overstated and probably not a thing. So why do we still have friction controversy? Why do we still get asked on shifts why uh, we want to give the contrast? And there's two things here that I think we need to talk about. Number one is, it's important to know what the exclusion criteria were from a lot of these trials. And in, a, in the case of these trials, people who had GFRs of less than 30 are typically excluded. I mean, these are people who are going to be CKD stage four and five, like they're basically just barely making it along and not quite end stage renal disease. The second population of patients that were excluded were transplant patients, um, which I think none of us really want to injure a transplanted organ, but it's hard to draw conclusions in those two populations because they're excluded from so many of the trials. And I don't think any of us are willing to kind of take that chance. The second thing I would say is that from an emergency medicine perspective, typically when I'm giving IV contrast, it's to basically rule out a life threat. So something like aortic dissection, acute mesenteric ischemia, um, pulmonary embolism. I'm giving contrast because in my differential, I'm clinically concerned of something that I need the contrast to be able to make or not make that diagnosis. I'm not talking about the same patient population as somebody who's had abdominal pain maybe for six months as an outpatient who is going to get a CT done on a non-emergent basis. So we're talking about two different patient populations here. Those that are acutely ill clinically look not good and have a high differential diagnosis for something that requires IV contrast. So changing hearts and minds. So this is hard because there's protocols in place for a lot of the places that we work at. And the problem with contrast agents is that it's multiple specialties. And I'm happy to say that at the hospital system I work at, those specialties have come together. They have looked at the current evidence and they've changed our protocols. And now I don't get the lovely question of, hey, the patient's creatinine is this, do you mind signing this piece of paper? They actually give the contrast to the patients without asking the question. And so this has been a nice change, but the way you change hearts and minds when you already have protocols in place is you get all the players at the table. You get the nephrologist, you get the radiologist, you get the intensivist, you get the emergency medicine physicians. You guys look at the same data and you come to the same conclusions and update the protocols. It's possible to do. I'm a community trench doc. I take care of patients for a living. I'm not in academics. I don't have any titles. I don't sit on any committees, but we were able to do this in our community system down in Texas. So if we can do this, anyone can do this. If you remember nothing else about this talk, get everyone in the same room. These protocols need to be updated. There's evidence now that shows that that association of acute kidney injury, chronic kidney disease, dialysis, and mortality are not a thing. And I like to call this a life over kidney situation, at least for those of us in the emergency department, when these patients come in, ask yourself, is this a life over kidney diagnosis? In other words, if I don't make this diagnosis, is a patient potentially going to die? And to me, that's more important than the potential harm that contrast would cause. Although I think we have enough evidence now to say that's most likely not the case.